Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam Last week you explained why black people are being abused because there rea- is reality in black color. I didn't quite understand. Can you kindly enlighten us again on that subject? The reality of black and the reality of every color in the pursuit of the lataif of the qalb, the color black represents the falaq or the akhfa. So it's the highest reality of annihilation and the secret of the color black is that it absorbs every color. So reality of colors are reflections. Black when you see something black means it absorbed every color and sent no color back because it's absorbing. So that's the, that's the reality of the akhfa, the reality of fana like a black hole that it absorbs anything and pulls the gravitational pull of a planet, begins to annihilate it and pull it within itself. So Allah give to us an understanding that the falaq is an ocean of annihilation where things annihilate. So we describe then the holiness of the black color. So when those who meditate and contemplate they see the holy companions and Ahlul Bayt, they are like the Rabbul Falaq, these are the lords of this reality of Falaq in which if you approach to them they will annihilate you and take away your somethingness. So then the tariqahs that their hearts are connected to that reality are bringing the students into that falaq, into that reality to take away and annihilate. At the same time Allah because the reality is so great, Allah attached for us to our body a shadow. Why the shadow is not yellow? Why the shadow is not red? That Allah made the shadow to be black so that we understood that when you stand this is the height of your existence. It's a miracle that you stand anyways because the vertical position is, is not some… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Something that two legs should be able to do. You generally need three to four to keep yourself in a vertical upright position. So with what power are you standing? Anything else if you put two legs, if you have a doll, put two legs and keep it, it falls over. So Allah is carrying us, He says, was there ever time that you're not been carried, you're not, you've been forgotten? Allah is by virtue of His majesty is carrying us and there's an energy that carries us and keep us upright. So it's the sign of our existence and Allah also knows that you are my, my favorite creation. So you have a tendency to become arrogant. So I attached for you a reminder, look at your shadow. That your shadow is a reminder of complete effacement, is completely in sujood, even beyond sujood is completely the face and hands are down, doesn't even have a, a, a portion of it being up. So it has a tremendous reality. So those whom understand that, that falaq, that reality of the darkness and how it represents to be effaced, then imagine a people whom walk the earth 
with that reality. They represent a, 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 a divine reality of effacement. So they have always fa effaced and faced extreme hardship on a dunya. That the dunya is all about manifestation and they represent a station of annihilation. So they have a, an, an important representation of what they represent from the Divinely Kingdom and the Heavenly Kingdom. Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi, the Habashin Abyssinian uh, race of people represented the secret of that reality. That the complete effacement, complete suffering but gave for us the example that you can suffer at the hands of dunya and that's the nature of dunya but you can make sure that that difficulty that comes to you is for, for a, a reason, a hikmah and a wisdom. And that was what we talked about of Sayyidina Bilal that they said, you know if you want to worship Allah you're still going to be enslaved by us but you're free to worship Allah in your heart nobody understands what you're doing. But the emancipation to break free from these chains, he says, that's not good enough, I have to be with Muhammadun Rasulullah And he taught for us that you must struggle for that love, show that love and endure the difficulty of that love, that's what's important for Allah It's not easy to carry the sunnah, it's not easy to carry the respect and the love for Prophet At the beginning phase people say, oh why, I don't want to do that but that's okay, don't do it. But at least these holy companions are teaching us, they got dressed by immense grace and immense stations from the Divine the Presence because of that. So they struggled for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result they represent immense realities that Allah dressed them that, since you struggle for my most beloved in creation then I dress you from the most beloved realities. And that's what that represents to us of perfection. Muhammadun Rasulullah's holy companions in Ahlul Bayt, they are the pinnacle and the most beloved of creation, the most. Because as you build a building, the top floor and the crown of that building is most important. All the creation that came before that was for the purpose of Allah putting the crown upon that creation which is called Muhammadun Rasulullah Holy companions are the top floor, means all of it was to show the greatness of these souls and their character and the perfection of their example. How much they struggled for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad so they give for us the best example. And that's what Allah is that this is the khuluq, and these are the, the masters of the one whom is the master of good character, these are his holy companions and whom he trained and dressed with love, they are the best of example. So has the immense, immense realities in the life of struggling and the, the realities of, of colors and annihilation inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Are there certain insan that are spiritual workers from Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq to help those who are like Sayyidina Bilal alayhi salaam? I think if that night when we, we talk that we're all like Sayyidina Bilal and Habashi, we're all under the oppression of a rock. Who, whoever is existing on this earth they have a rock on their chest. <clears throat> I think there's a picture, a cartoon people have put out where the man is on a cliff and he's holding his wife with his hand, a snake is biting at his hand in the middle of the mountain and a rock is crushing his back. Means that every man whom trying to keep their family to be halal and their children to be raised halal, 
Sh shaitan is a snake biting at his hands, not to do it, let them go and break the connection. At the same time the dunya is crushing him with every type of obstacle and difficulty. So there is no man with no rock on him. So we're all, all being dressed by that reality. It's the one whom is clever that understood the Sayyidina Bilal and Habashi is teaching for us. You're all struggling but what are you struggling for? So 99% of them are just struggling for the money. They know they're going to get crushed but they just want money. No problem if you want money but at least make it for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi that I want for the perfection of my faith, I want the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the dunya and all of its other uh, attachments that are coming but their love and their crushing is for their faith and to keep their way. And to, to not lose the sunnah, not lose everything that is of a majestic reality. We talked last night, look into your closet, you have thousands of dollars worth of clothing and one old sunnah suit, this for the men. Women's clothing is the same both ways, doesn't make a difference but the men is completely different. Your dunya suits are dunya suits. You know how much those cost and how much your shoes cost and how much your socks cost and all, all those uh, accessories. Look at your sunnah, why there's like one old sunnah suit, what's wrong with you? Why you don't buy two, three, four nice beautiful beatific sunnah suits and balance it with what you have. So means that everyone can go back into their lives to look that the, what are they putting as a respect and ihtiram on the importance of Sayyidina Muhammad in their lives and they struggle. They struggle to make the payments for their donations and their charities, just the best of struggling. Not only struggle to pay your car payments but struggle in the way of generosity and love and all the programs and the mawlids and, and everything in our lives to give out the food, to take time off of your busy schedule and go pick up food and distribute food when you could be making money with that time that you're using. So it's all relevant, this is all the sign of, of struggling. So then we find out in our lives, is that rock for dunya is on my head or is this the rock of my faith in which I'm struggling and struggling to keep my faith, to keep my family, to keep my practices. And then we're all, if we understood that reality then we're all, especially whom are hearing my voice and, and seeing these images, asking Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq uh, for najat, that we're all being suffered. When will the order come from Prophet save this servant, save this ashiqeen, this lover of mine, muhibeen, that he has an immense love for me and he's struggling. And at that time Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is to be dispatched to save us from dunya. So very much real in everyday life, these are not stories of old and fables of old but in every moment they're happening now. If you're listening to 12 months of these talks because this is the cave. So what's going to be talked about in the next week or so is the cave in which Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq put his holy foot on a hole to stop the shaitan and the snake from coming out. So that can only be the, the Qadam as Siddiq, the only one who can save us from the waswas of shaitan is if Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq intercedes and begins to put his foot on the hole where shaitan is coming to whisper to you, whisper to you to come against and to bite Prophet astaghfirullah. Means to bite his character, bite his way, bite anything of a beatific nature of the reality of Prophet Everybody has a little snake within them like a Yazid that want to come against the sunnah, want to come against this, want to come against that, well this is da'if, this is this, oh, that's a snake in your mouth, there's nothing da'if. Everything beatific is from Prophet and awliyaullah they connect their hearts with Prophet and in their heart they know exactly. So these are, these are the snakes that have to be taken away, by whom? By the one whom their character is good. 
their character is exemplified like the love that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq had, the truthfulness that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq has. When they exhibit that, they become like Siddiqiyoon, Siddiqiyah. And as a result, they, they're dressing from that reality. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq's madad and support, inshaAllah, to begin to close that shaitan from entering through the hole to come against Prophet. All of these now are tying in. That snake was coming to come against Prophet and that's the, the great Siddiq has to put his foot upon our foot and say, now your foot is matching my path. But if your foot are out there dancing and doing ridiculous things then you're not a Siddiqiya character and your feet are not on the feet of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as So that's why it's Qadam as Siddiq. So Qadam al-Haqq is Prophet Qadam as Siddiq the ones whom are inheriting from the character of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. So we don't need to keep saying, oh the shaykh said this, shaykh said like that and then another shaykh says, no it's not like that, it's not like that. Go and read yourself. What was the character of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, his immense generosity and his immense love for Prophet and that was Siddiqiyya character. Nobody can say, do like this or do like that. The example is from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq direct. What was the character, what was the generosity, what was the love for Prophet As a result they, they honour that footpath. They are, are inheriting that holy foot and that holy qadam. As a result, they're upright and straight people, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it true that Prophet Muhammad didn't have a shadow? That the reflection of light they didn't cast a, a shadow? This is what they, they've said. The Prophet the light was luminous and would, would go through Prophet and that he was the reflection of an immense light at night and that glowed like the shining full moon. The luminous reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is immense. There are in Tazkiyat and Awliya and these were times before that these are not times that are now because of the, the dajjal and the, the deception of all the magic and, and all of these things that will be happening on earth. But there are many stories of Tazkiyat al awliya that they were very luminous and their physicality would vanish and you would see from them a hologram. I think there was one shaykh that when he would talk, he said that when I go out for Jummah and talk take this sword and move it through me. And as he's sitting and giving the, the talk, they moved the sword and the sword went right through him as if his light being was the only thing casting out to the audience. And that what we know now is a hologram, that his, his luminous reality was manifesting to the audience but his physicality was hidden somewhere else. So then these are many different realities of light and the reflection. So Prophet is the master of these realities. If he wanted at that time to bring his luminous reality and hide the physical then definitely there would be no shadow because light passing through light casts no shadow, it only casts a shadow on that which is solid. InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. If black color is to annihilate ourself of our reality, what is the white light color represent? This you have to buy the levels of the heart. So that when you're not reading the levels of the heart then you have these questions of uh, the different colors. It's in the realities of the heart. So that the yellow, what is the secret of yellow? Knowledge, what is the secret of red and struggle? The black is in the center, so this is a station of annihilation that everybody has to go through a stage in which they annihilate. Then once they annihilate what happens? When they manifest again the white represents a light in which is the soul. And then from the soul it moves towards the khafa realities of power which is more of a bluish than green but it's a greenish blue. And then again it goes back into the oceans of annihilation. 
So these are the realities of the light and the colors of the light and the in infinite spectrum between these lataifs, between the black to the white, between the white to the green and to the blue. So these are all these realities of light. So when one loses and annihilates themselves, then what happens in their manifestation is the manifestation of their light begins to manifest. And that's why the station of the Sirr Sirr is with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and it represents the fajr, right? So you go through the fajr is a faraj and a salvation. As soon as they pray their fajr it's as if they're being dressed by the Sirr Sirr because they're going through three veils of darkness They go from their Maqrib to Salat al Isha and coming into an ocean of manifestation. So it has many different realities but these are in the lataif of the qalb, levels of the heart book inshaAllah. So if you are interested in those subjects then you get the levels of the heart, read little by little, it's a very deep reality. So you… this system because my son was asking today that your books are impossible to read. I read one page and I'm, I'm just, what is this? You know it's an encrypted system. The tariqah and these, these knowledges they're not meant for you to not know us, buy the book, uh, encapsulate all these ancient realities and go out and start your own group. It's no way. It's not anything like that at all. If someone coming from that perspective will open the book, will look at two lines of it, be completely confused and shut the book and put it away. It's an encrypted knowledge. It's designed not to be plagiarized, it's designed not to be understood. The encryption key is the shaykh. So highly encrypted knowledge and the key because now you're starting to know, right? Blockchain technology coming out, everybody has to have cold storage, ledgers, all these technologies, right? So who, who's the ledger? The shaykh and you're trying to get onto their blockchain, you're trying to get onto their knowledges. You're not going to be able to download anything. You merely provide the act of buying the book to show that you're hazir, you're, you're ready. You begin to listen, says, I, I got this book, I don't understand anything about this, great. Now start listening to the talks. As soon as you listen to the talks you say, no I want to be a student of the way. You put into your heart you want to be a student. Then the shaykh keeps telling you every talk what? Connect, make your muraqaba. What's that mean? Our tech guys out there should know that's what, that's make sure that you have your key with you, right? So your ledger is your key so that any of your transactions are going to be based on your ledger. It's going to communicate with your ledger that you keep with you because it's the most safest uh, encryption. Why? Because uh, anywhere else somebody can steal it. So the shaykh is the key. So if you're not making meditation there's no way you're understanding anything in these books. So as soon as you meditate there's a light coming. The light is now coming into your heart, it's an encryption key. Then you read a page and you're trained on how to meditate, you begin to meditate, the key comes and begin to click for that level. And then you got a, aha I understood that. And then again next time you read again and you begin to meditate they come with another key and click again. And then they're continuously observing that this knowledge that came to you, what is your character like? And are you continuously meditating, are you trying to improve? It's all encrypted. So it doesn't just come by the student getting the book and watching the videos, it makes no sense to anyone. It's all highly encrypted and the key is with the shaykh. As soon as they meditate with the shaykh and begin to connect their heart, that's when the conveyance and the key is being transferred. Those whom are 
strong in their connection, strong in their understanding, strong in their good character and keeping themselves in good character, then that key is coming in and opening and opening and opening. And uh, you have to have your security codes, everything the physical world is teaching you of technologies, Allah has a much more advanced ancient version that it all continuously being checked, being checked, being checked, the next it can go deeper, it can go deeper. And it's all based on the companionship of the shaykh. And when the shaykh passes away, if the connection is strong, then the encryption is still flowing into the heart of that representative. So that's why the key is based on that, it's not key is based that the shaykh passed away, you didn't make a connection and you can take his books, open them and start to teach and the knowledge will come, no. The key is the, is the shaykh, his soul is the key. So as soon as you're connecting that soul has to go in, verify into your heart and begin to push the dial, push the dial, push the dial. And that's why the system is based on this. If other shaykhs are not doing it, they don't have it. But this shaykh when he's teaching you, get the book, meditate, get the book, meditate so that this file can be downloaded into the hearts of the servant, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum respected Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah What are the conditions needed in order to host a Miladun Nabi wasallam? Conditions to host a Milad? The find a venue, get some reciters, put out some food. If uh, one wants to support our Milads that are done through the orphanages it's much easier than trying to do the whole thing yourself unless you know, you know hundreds of people and you're going to put on a grand celebration. But supporting our celebrations are greatly needed. So we have a Vancouver celebration, we have the Pakistan celebration. And then anyone who wants to do within their house then alhamdulillah you invite your relatives, you put out a beautiful dinner and take out the salawat books that we have available on Amazon. You print out the book because not everybody will have the app. And then you recite the, the milad and recite the different nasheeds and salawat. You can get a nat, nat khwan and they can come and begin to recite some nasheeds for the love of Prophet So, so many ways that people can participate or give out food for milad. If you don't want to actually do the whole milad and, and all of that is on that, on that holy week is to give out food as much as possible for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad But we made everything very easy is that we have the grand milad. And it requires support and those whom are supporting and supporting the orphanage programs and supporting the water wells, what would be more beatific than to have water wells for the love of Prophet That there are people who will be drinking because of the Mila the Nabi they're getting access to clean and, uh, and fresh waters. So that is beautiful for, for Imam al Hussein we had over 30 wells in the name of Imam al Hussein in this Muharram. So there's, these are beatific actions that are so easily available that people can order wells in the name of Sayyidina Muhammad, in the name of the Milad al Nabi or whatever they want. They can give qurbans, they can give a repair of an orphanage. We have the pediatric section of, uh, of an orphanage now and a hospital in, in that area that we're trying to put together and find the equipment and allocate those equipments. So many projects and so many ways for people to participate whether they're participating from themselves and their home or from the projects that we're putting out. That's why it's, uh, it's so readily available for everybody to participate inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Does having holy names bring hardships and difficulties or more support in life? Like my name is Rabia al-Basri. Life pulls me towards spirituality. What's the name? Rabia al-Basri. Hmm. Yeah, certain, certain names have a, have a haiba, a majestic dress on them. So they, they come with a majestic tajalli, inshaAllah. And whatever Allah has written for the servant is, is written. So 
It's a matter of being patient and doing your practices, doing the meditation, doing the charity, doing all of the, the connections, everything that had been prescribed and having sabr that Allah grant us a, a, a patience and that uh, there is no difficulty in the way of Allah that is not of a beatific nature. So what one may refer as a difficulty is Allah alleviating hardships of eternity. That better to face the minor difficulties of dunya than the greater difficulties of akhirah. So that there's hadith of Prophet that not even the prick of a rose thorn that comes to a servant that it doesn't take away a difficulty. So everything is a hikmah in which Allah wants to dress the servant with very high stations and high realities. So it requires high level testing, high level of patience and perseverance and these are all rewards. So imagine if you have a Lord that doesn't give you any rewards then you'd say, okay why, why in this world I, 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 how is I going to get anything from the heavens? So by means of dunya we are achieving our stations in paradise. So that's why then the testings and, and insults and, and, uh, and difficulties of the world and uh, everything on, on the heavens is upside down on this earth. So heavenly people they seem like they're nobody on this earth and the people that look like they're up so high on this earth they're actually in the pit of, of the reality of the heavens. So if you look at a mountain on earth and you draw that these are all the, the famous people like a mountain that the top most famous person on this earth right now, movie stars, Bollywood stars whatever it's like make a mountain of it and say, oh look how high they are this is actually the reality of the heavens, that they are at the lowest point which we don't want to what that's called but they're <laughs> the very dangerous part of the bottom. And that which was on the bottom is actually all the way on the top in the heavens. So the scale is completely the reverse, whatever you're seeing of very high on earth is actually very low within the heavens. And anything low on this earth that people don't give a respect to it is very high within the heavens. So this is an upside down world for us. So Mawlana Shaykh Nazim Sultanul Awliya would always say, I'm upside down in this world. Meaning people don't know me, you don't think of somebody like this is just a, he's an old man sitting in Cyprus, he's the king of uh, Aulia which is the universe is under his command. They always say, I'm upside down on this earth and people say, what do you mean upside down? Because it's the system. This what you think is a big and high and big people up on earth is actually these are the pits of the lower levels. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Sayyidi, how do I know if Allah is upset with me? How we know if Allah loves us is by knowing how much we love Allah <clears throat> When we love Allah with our heart and with our actions, with our good character because love is something we said and we begin tonight, when we started tonight it was about love. It was about love is based on actions. So. If my actions are good, my actions are loving, I'm trying my best to show my love for Allah I go around trying to do good deeds, I go to good associations, I participate and support good things and I have an immense love for Allah Who put that there? You think shaitan put that there? Because he goes around putting the love for Allah in your heart? No, the only reason you love Allah is because Allah loves you. And he put that love within the heart. So why Allah is that to be upset with you? And if you are sincere in love you should be upset with yourself for where you're falling short. That you're sincere, you're trying to do your best from what I just described, you, 
you try to participate in everything. But you should be the most critical yourself of your character that, Ya Rabbi that I could do more and I'm upset that I have this character, my defects, I'm upset with myself Ya Rabbi and they grant me a himma and a strength and grant me the, the zeal to do more and to be better and to make you even happier for me. And that you be happy and when that you look at me you be happy with my character. And Allah looks to the heart of the servant and sees if they have that immense love and the love for Sayyidina Muhammad and they're exemplifying their love by their actions then why Allah to be upset and disappointed? Allah inshaAllah to send us support and a love and to give more. So everything is always to be positive, don't let shaitan come and to make everything to be negative. Now if the person is not doing good, continuously bothering, continuously fighting, continuously angry, continuous then yes you should be concerned. But the one whom does good sees good and they can always do better. If they are critical of themselves then alhamdulillah Allah at least is looking at us and saying at least you're trying to work on it. But you say, no, no I'm the best, this is the best I'm going to give you and that's it then no there's there's going to be difficulty. So everyone has an understanding themselves, if they're doing good they should see good. And if they have that love then they should know that that love was placed in their heart by Allah Shaitan doesn't do that, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa You once mentioned specific fingers touching when making dua, can you please speak about that reality? No, I think somebody asked that, I didn't mention it. Somebody <laughs> asked why sometimes your fingers are like this or sometimes like that, that's just an energy that uh, is important but we haven't talked about that inshaAllah. But everything on the hands has an energy. So every finger has a reality and alhamdulillah when they need to connect their energy then alhamdulillah they're connecting their energy and they're making their du'a. And their du'a is more from the heart and the emission of the energy of their heart than what's said on the tongue, it's through the recitation of their hearts. That's why it's for them it's, it's, it's more difficult to recite from the tongue because all their life their training was through their qalb and their khafi. So in their khafi rea reality of connection their conveyance is through their heart and through their spirituality. So to reduce that to the tongue then can be very, very difficult if that's not something they're trained or not in their eloquence. So alhamdulillah those are different realities of those whom they're trained in their spirituality and the conveyance of, of the energy for their du'as and for their requests inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Please forgive me for my ignorance, would investing to cryptocurrency be considered gambling? Investing to cryptocurrencies, uh, it wouldn't be gambling because we accept crypto donations. <laughs> oh, you see the siren? <laughs> that was that was very timely. <laughs> yeah, no alhamdulillah. You can give donations through cryptocurrency. So you go to MuslimCharity.com and give your crypto to the charity, inshaAllah. Gambling and any any form of investment that requires a immense amount of speculation and there's a immense danger in your funds then become like gambling. So those and those items which are more… what's the word for it? More stable and less volatile. So anything in life and any type of business is, is going to have an element of risk. When it becomes too risky then one has to govern themselves accordingly. That not to put your money at risk, not to, to put it into things that are not stable 
and have an immense amount of volatility. So that can be in any type of trade, in any type of business, people might buy items, forget about crypto, they go buy items and say, oh I'm going to buy all these things, I'm going to bring it on a container and I'm going to bring it all the way here and sell them but it's something of a volatile business, maybe not something very solid, you come here and they're not worth anything. So anything that we do within our life that has that level of volatility then we have to govern ourselves accordingly and be careful that not to expose ourselves to volatility and, and things that are so dangerous that all your wealth can be taken away in a matter of days and hours. So best to invest in things that are solid and stable and long term so that the long term look within it is something solid like real estate or, or stocks that are of a long term nature and that their values to go up and that the industry in which they work in is again something clean, not uh, what they call good money, not buying industries that are bad and that harm people that has no barakah and no blessings. So anyone who is investing in their life then they have to invest with a wisdom and a hikmah inshaAllah for what Allah would be pleased with, that not to invest in things that are not uh, according to Islamic understandings or not for the benefit of humanity and to the detriment of humanity. And then that which is also not volatile and that puts your entire wealth at risk and at danger. And don't borrow against your homes to make investments that your home is your investment and that you don't touch it. Because you don't, there are people who put too many loans against themselves trying to make investments on money they don't even have. Where they borrow against their home then invest that money which is again that's not the, the way and that, that that's not safe at all. So only whatever is available to you and that you don't think you need immediately then those would be monies that you invest, never touch your home and put loans upon your home more than what you, you, you need as to, to acquire that home inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How to deal with insecurities? Hmm? <laughs> Meditation and salawats inshaAllah. Meditate and make salawats, make your connections. Your salawat and light that comes into the heart should take away difficulties of character, insecurities of character. That to be insecure or to have a fear is a lack of faith. So its remedy is going to be anything that improves my faith. So any type of question like this is that I'm, I'm, I'm not secure. Why am I not secure that uh, whatever the conditions are in my life I don't feel secure on this earth with my rizq, my money, my home, my family, my relationships. All of these then are a fear and the counter to fear is faith. So do the practices that require the strengthening of faith. Your salawats, your, your namaz, everything always, always whatever Allah ordered first and then your salawats and your meditation. So that shaitan is not coming strong and waswasing to people. When your character is strong, your connection is strong, the salawats and the love is strong, it gives you a strength that takes away insecurity and fear. Your love for Prophet becomes so strong, what are you fearing? So that shaitan has to be taken away in his access to the heart of the servant and that only can come when the servant is not strong in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And the way to remedy that is then to make the connection to be stronger with the meditation, the salawats and all the practices. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amin Yasifoon As Salaamun Al Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi Hurmat Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Bi Seer Surat Al Fatiha As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh this is Shaykh Najan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people. 
and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.